a training session on the outskirts of Donetsk. After five years of conflict, the self-proclaimed republic now has its own elite forces. But today, two young recruits also learn how to shoot. It's an incredible feeling, and I really like it, even if it hurts my ears a bit. If I have to defend my homeland, I'm ready to use a weapon. Ilya and his friend Aristar are members of a patriotic youth group. They're barely 18 and study in the same hospitality school. For a few hours, they traded their aprons for automatic weapons. We really cultivate patriotic values in our republic, and we're now on our way to integrating the Russian Federation. Today, I no longer feel Ukrainian. The two youngsters also seize the opportunity to revise a classic, how to strip down and reassemble an AK-47. OK, 25 seconds, that's perfect. The Russian people have the Kalashnikov in their blood. As soon as a child can talk, he's able to recognize one. Aristar admits his stance isn't shared by everyone in his family. My parents are very skeptical about this war. They think peace can be obtained through diplomacy. But peace deals have gone unheeded. Since 2014, almost 13,000 people have been killed in the Donbas war. And two separatist republics were created with active support from Russia. The airport of Donetsk was the scene of the fiercest fighting before it was taken by separatists in 2015. In the city center, far from the front line, residents try to lead a normal life. But the struggle also takes place in people's minds. In this museum dedicated to the Second World War, a section focuses on the conflict in Donbas, an opportunity to spread the usual anti-Ukrainian message. On the other side, it's mercenaries who are fighting. They came for the money, and most of them are nationalists. They support Hitler's principles and the Nazi ideology. But among this group of students, points of view are often more nuanced. I have friends in Ukraine. I communicate with them. I don't think we should be enemies. Just because we're on different sides of the barricades, our thoughts might be different, but we are still friends. Until now, the republics of Donetsk and Lugansk don't benefit from any international recognition, not even from Moscow. For a long time, coal and steel industries brought prosperity to Donbass. But that was before the war and the blockade imposed by Ukraine. Coke is loaded on these wagons and then sent to the steel factory. This plant had to adjust to the situation, like many industries here. Our production is sold only within the Republic. Before the war, well, 30 to 40 percent were sold in Ukraine, and the rest went abroad. Opacity is common in this very sensitive economic sector. Are separatist authorities getting round the blockade? When we ask, they dodge the issue without denying. The two republics are not officially recognized, and economic sanctions have been put in place. For these reasons, I cannot make any comment regarding the markets where our production is sold. Back in Donetsk, where we meet up again with Ilya and Aristar, no one in their families took part in the fighting these past few years. And yet they decided to turn their backs on their native country. I want to change the future of our republic. I want to be a part of its life and have my name inscribed on the list of the people who took part in its development. 
Some Ukrainians are good, hard-working people. They live a normal life and don't want to fight. But it's the government that started the war and is imposing its ideas. After all that, I don't think the people of Donbass will ever forgive Ukrainian crimes and reintegrate Ukraine. The war has taken its toll. In Donetsk, many young people are receptive to the government in power's ideology. And the gap with Ukraine keeps growing wider.